Hey, how you doing? My name is Dominic Lennon. I am a musician, recording artist, producer. My new class on Skillshare just launched, and I'm really excited to be sharing an exclusive sneak peek with you on our introduction to digital audio workstations and music production. Now that we've dove in a little bit into breaking the beat down, the best thing for us to talk about next would be this thing that I like to call groove theory. The way that groove theory works is ultimately the way that your micro adjustments inside of your rhythmic patterns make our bodies move to the music the way that they do and make our heads nod the way that they do. A lot of that revolves around those little variations in between a hi-hat or that late moment before a snare hits or that early moment when a kick drum comes in. When it comes to adding more intricacy into the production that you're working on, I think that groove theory and the idea of having a little bit more swing and bounce will really give you even more control of how your music feels and sounds. So now that we have a baseline overview of how a concept like groove theory works, let's watch it in action inside of FL Studio. I'm going to add a new rhythmic pattern inside of FL Studio by adding another hi-hat track in. You'll hear how it sounds a little bit straight and how there's not much syncopation going on in the rhythmic pattern. We're gonna add a little bit of groove to this by just taking a very normal pattern and shifting it off of the normal grid. We're gonna go into pattern one, and we're gonna open our piano roll up. You're gonna go to your snap options, which will be at the top of your toolbar, this green magnet. If you click the magnet icon, you will see all these different snap options. Originally, it will be set to step. This is your default. Switch this to none. You're gonna use the select option and pick everything inside of your hi-hat track, and we are now going to click your draw tool and we can zoom in a little bit too to have a little bit more control on this and a little bit more precision. And we're just gonna shift this a little bit off the grid. Quantization is a really, really important part of groove theory. That's the computer being able to correct the imperfections that normally would exist inside of a human recording. But what we're doing is we're kind of adding that human touch back in by unquantizing and moving things around the grid to be able to give ourselves a different feeling on the track. This adds a little bit of subtle groove. We're gonna up the ante a little bit and move some other sounds and other instruments around and unquantize it a little bit on purpose to add a little bit more groove to our pattern. For example, this chord that has been playing originally that sounded like this. Can be manipulated by taking some of these sounds I'm just moving them a little bit off of the grid so that you almost get like a flam effect. This versus this. Just adds a little bit of variation to what you're doing. So now when I move that around a little bit on this grid, this starts to sound like this in context of the rest of our beat. So you can move things a little bit ahead of the beat, you can move things a little bit behind the beat. It's just a matter of, you know, using a little bit of touch and feel to see what sounds right to you and what feels right to you. This is one of the cool things about groove. It's pretty subjective, you know what I'm saying? You can kind of go as left to the grid as you want to or as right to the grid as you want to. All that matters is that you feel good about how it sounds. I added a little bit more syncopation to this percussive sample that we have and it adds a lot more bounce on the first pattern. So that has a little bit more swing and bounce to it on that little popping sound or tom sound or percussive sound if you want to than this pattern.
that really is what groove theory is all about. It's just, you know, finding those little accents and those touches and those little moments where you can move things a little bit behind the beat or a little bit ahead of the beat to give yourself a really, really cool feeling. So we're gonna take this traditional four on the floor pattern that we were talking about before in our last class. And we're gonna add a little bit of syncopation to this as well, a little bit of groove to it by messing with the shaker sound. When you add that clap in, having a little bit of syncopation and delay on that shaker, it just brings a little bit of more groove to this more traditional pattern. And then when you start to add more and more of the intricate layers into it, you have more syncopation going on inside of those intricate layers, that's when you really, really, really get to explore how the stuff feels and how it sounds. So now that we've talked a little bit about how groove theory works and how syncopation and how quantization can work inside of programming your drums, programming your rhythmic patterns and your melodies, I would love to see some of the grooves that you guys come up with if you want to share them in the project gallery below. So next up, what we're going to be talking about is harmony and melody inside of your digital audio workstation. Thank you so much for joining me. This is one part of my class on Skillshare. Really appreciate your time, energy, and attention. Join me in the full class to learn how to set up your digital audio workstation step by step for making your own music on computers. Click on the link below. I can't wait to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.